right, well, another 392 up on the rack, but this one is a little bit different, and we've been wanting to do this for a long time. We uh, worked with our customer, Dan, and he got in touch with Quinn at 74 Weld and decided that this was the 392 to run the 74 Weld portals. Take a look at that right there. So this is the rear portal box. That caliper and brake is completely inside the wheel if you look from right here. Nothing hanging out. There it is on the other side tucked in there. These portals basically come with a chromoly axle shaft in the top, so it's a chromoly axle upgrade. 3.8 inches of drop to the center line of the axle and 22% gear reduction. So what that accomplishes on a 392 is takes the gear ratio from 373s to 456s without re-gearing the ring and pinion. It also takes 22% of the load off of the locker, the spider gears, the axle shafts, and distributes that 22% through the gear reduction of the straight cut gears on the outer portals. In a sense, you're getting 3.8 inches of lift, you're getting 456 gears installed, and zero suspension, drivetrain, bump stops, any of that. We left the links and the axles pretty much stock, except for this. These are Fox 2.5 smooth body shocks with the high speed and low speed compression adjusters on them. With the weight of the 392, with the fact of wheeling on 38s going a little faster, you still have a small amount of up travel on the 392, so big shocks, big fluid, big valving definitely addresses that. As far as the tires go, 38 Nitto Ridge Grapplers on this thing. Good on the highway, good on the trail, just about for everything. One of the things we definitely need to touch on is these method wheels right here. So these rims are 5.75 inches of backspacing. So that is a plus 18. So when you have the width of the portal box, you gotta make sure the wheels suck in as far as possible so you're not sticking out really wide. And of course on this one, super sleeper, wants to be easy to get in and out of it for his wife and himself. So rock slide engineering steps with the extra skid added on it. He is gonna go take this thing to the Rubicon. That's why we're getting him the clearance. One of the other thing that happens on the 392, when you put the portals on, you'll notice eight lug. So it changes it from the five on five lug pattern to good old Chevy eight on six and a half GM early Ford lug patterns. We now have eight lug axles on the 392. Um, you see that beautiful Gucci 74 weld cap. I'll even give you the light on that thing. Look at that. Whew. Really nice machine work. Wheel wood brakes on this thing that come with the kit. As we move around the front, Doobie's just finishing this thing up right now. Once again, eight lug, 74 weld. Sneak in here. So on the front, there is no chromoly axle, but the factory stub shaft is cut down so that it fits into the portal without sticking out the other end. You basically just cut the threads off of the, uh, where the nut goes on a little bit, shorten it, reuse it, and you get that 22% reduction up front as well. So here you can get a better look at the portal, and it actually is a good shot from right here behind the rotor because you can see everything happening. Um, so 3.8 inches of drop from the factory stub shaft going in right here down to the unit bearing uh, that's eight lug that sticks out. And you can see the brake caliper gets moved down low in the front as well, which once again isn't an issue because if you look on this side, the caliper is completely tucked inside the wheel. We added our WFO track bar brace to this thing. As we said, the 2.5 inch smooth body factory lift Fox shocks, which the reservoirs are mounted right here. We're about to take the tape off. Got our WFO heavy duty 7075 tie rod and 7075 drag link with the Fox steering stabilizer. And then with the bigger tires and the portals and more lever arm, uh, Doobie went ahead and added the C gussets from Artec, the lower link skid plates from Artec, and then the entire Artec truss that actually covers over the top of this uh, uh, front axle disconnect so we don't worry about breaking the cast and breaking the housing as he, uh, he hits a little hard on the trail. This is our first 392 or first JL with the portals. I can't wait to see how it drives and how it does on the trail and we'll, uh, we'll even check the clearance once it's on the ground. Uh, guys, what's going on here? Oh, oh, oh God, no, no. <laughs> 
Hey Dan, nice rack. Well, here we are, we're driving uh, 70 miles an hour exactly. Portals are dead quiet. Uh, really has good power at this ratio with 38s and 456s basically. It's perfect, 2000 RPMs at 70 miles an hour. Um, same old deal, one finger down the highway hitting the bumps and then you know it is a 392 so and it accelerates nicely are so tight that you're driving down the you know the highway in a hard top enclosed vehicle no howl no gear noise on the gas off the gas um, can't even tell it has portals in it um, with the exception you're sitting up higher and you're running 38s and you're at the right rpm um, for the tire size so it's like the best all-in-one one shot throw at uh, modifying your Jeep and making it work pretty well. Well, let me tell you, the test drive did not disappoint. The Jeep drove absolutely amazing, almost like stock, tons of power, um, riding on a 38's really nice, no noise out of the 38's, uh, the rock slide engineering steps, everything about it. Uh, hit some bumps really hard with the 2.0, or sorry, the 2.5 Foxes, and they seem to suck it up really well, so what a great ride.